right everyone welcome to my studio it's uh, time for another video demo this week and I'm going to change our subject for just a minute we're going to take a quick detour this week we're going to move away from exploring color just for the week and delve into the world of mark making um, I think sometimes we get so engrossed in one aspect of painting that we kind of neglect other things so I think it's really good to take a break every once in a while and just let go have fun forget about all the so-called rules and color schemes and value maps and all of that stuff and just let go and have fun and play with the way you apply the pastel and that is what we call mark making and we'll be talking more about mark making uh, over the course of the week but I wanted to do a demonstration of a subject that is a really fun way to help you explore the uh, uh, idea of how you apply pastels or making marks and that is the subject is going to be a bird nest now you may or may not be interested in painting a bird nest but I urge you to give it a try because it is just a really really fun way to let go and just play with your marks how you make the marks um, it just a, a bird nest allows you to play with a variety of marks which is what makes it fun so as I said I'm not going to choose a color scheme I didn't do a thumbnail I didn't do any of that it's all about just being playful and having fun in the studio so with that in mind I did select the colors that I think I might want to use for the bird nest. Um, I didn't pick it by color scheme which is what we've been doing this week uh, instead I just picked colors that I thought might work well for the subject so I've got some darks always like to begin with the darks I've got some greens for the foliage in the tree. I've got uh, uh, some nest colors, some violets to yellows or in, uh, oranges. And of course I have some egg colors right in here. That's way more egg colors than I'll ever need, but I happen to have them out for my last nest painting, so I just left them on the tray. All right, let me show you my reference photo here. Can we see that? It's just a small crummy photo of a bird nest that uh, a bird, I think it was a robin, built its nest out in one of our trees last spring. And so I was able to uh, get a few shots of the nest. And so it's a small crummy photo as usual, but I like that because it gives me permission to uh, interpret it in my own way. So I already went ahead and did an initial kind of rough drawing. I used, I happen to use a dark blue new pastel and I just basically placed my nest. Now I want to have my nest attached to the edges of the paper so I have some branches shooting off here and that will anchor it to the side of the paper. I didn't want my nest to be dead center. I didn't want it to be, to be too small so I'm trying to kind of um, put it a little bit off center and I, I indicated where my little eggs are going to go. They're not exactly the way it is in my photo but again it's you know I when we paint we become the artist we're not a camera so we can change things around if we want to do that. I'm working on a piece of um, Wallace warm mist paper that was seconds that Kitty Wallace was selling. I don't know if she still has seconds available, but I did get some last year while it was available. So I like it because of this tone allows me to start without any underpainting. So this tone paper becomes basically the underpainting or the glue that will hold all the colors together. You can easily tone your own paper. I've gotten uh, paint matched to this color and then use that as an underpainting. Again, we'll get into underpaintings in the next few months. Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. All right, so to start the painting, the first thing we're going to do is block in the darks. We're going to work from dark to light. We're going to work from thin layers to thicker, heavier pigment. We're going to work from wide or broad strokes using the side of the pastel down to the detail. I don't want to get into the detail too soon. All right, so let's start with the darks. And why not start with a dark blue? So I'm going to squint at my nest and see where do I have dark areas? Well, it's dark around where the eggs are laying in that cup of the nest. So I'm going to use a light touch and, and add some dark there. There's some, the branches that are, that the nest is um, resting on, I'm going to begin those using a dark. I will lighten them, but I think 
if I can start them darker, I can always lighten them and change them. I'm going to darken the bottom of this nest. Now remember, I'm going to be gradually building the nest with smaller and smaller marks. So I want to start off with big wide strokes. And I'm using the side of my pastel, you see how I'm holding it, to create broader strokes. I'm not starting to weave the, the um, finer threads of the nest, if you will. Now I'm going to pick up another color that's the same value as the blue. This is a dark uh, kind of burgundy. And I'm going to go over all those dark areas and create another layer of dark. And I'm doing this just so that my dark areas will be richer and more interesting than if I just use one color. And after all, the, the, the straw and the nest and the branches are not really blue, but I want it to be interesting. That's two layers. I think I'm going to go for yet another layer. What else did I put in here? I'm, I'm needing to use what I have. What is this one? This is a dark brownish green. It is also the same value as the two colors that I already added. So I'm going to just lightly go over adding that dark brown to my layers. And notice every time I add another layer, I don't necessarily feel like I have to put it everywhere. And I'm actually pulling out a few individual uh, kind of twiggy marks with that dark brown. Remember, I'm setting the stage for the light colors that are going to come on top. So I want to make sure my darks are dark and rich enough. And then finally, and I might not have it, I might have to either make it work or step off camera. Hmm. I think I'm going to just make it work. What I'm missing is my dark Terry Ludwig eggplant, which, which I, at this point I would come and put it in right around the edges where I see where it's mo mo more dark than anything else. Look in the tray that's under the easel for the dark, I'm talking to Michael, no, uh, underneath the painting, look for the, bring it over here, because I really want to show you how this works, thank you. This was, this is the palette I was working on for the, uh, for a painting yesterday, and here it is. This is that really really dark eggplant now you can now you can see the difference where i put it in you see how much darker that is now if i put it everywhere in the nest as my dark then it would be nowhere it wouldn't have as, as much impact but if i only put it in a few areas like really right underneath the nest where it's in the shadow and and right where the eggs are laying then it has much a stronger impact so again i could easily get carried away with this i'm going to make myself stop so i've got all the darks in place the next thing i'm going to do is um put in the egg shapes and i'm not going to get them perfectly refined but i just want to get them started and i'm using the eggs are going to be kind of a bluish green so I'm starting with the darkest color that I want to appear in the egg. So kind of a darkish blue. They're not all showing, you know, they're overlapping and some of the straw is overlapping them a little bit. So I'm, I'm mindful of that. And as I build the color on the eggs, I just kind of gradually get a little light, lighter because they're not as dark, but you can see if I start dark, then I have a nice dark base to, to respond to. So like that. And then they're more of a greenish. So I'm adding a very light, um, kind of really pale blue-green, I guess you could say. And so I'm creating, by starting with the dark and gradually adding the light, I'm starting to give them a little bit of volume and form. Let's make these, these are speckled eggs of some sort. So they weren't robin's eggs, now that I'm looking more closely. They have speckles on them. So I'm going to take that dark brown that I already used and then introduce a few marks of speckles. Now, what I want you to notice is as I'm painting this painting is how I'm changing my marks to help describe this subject. So here I'm using little dots with the tip of my pastel. To create the eggs, I used the side of the pastel and just kind of dragged it around. I used the side of my pastel for the most part to lay down the darks. Um, now I want to um, 
I think at this point I'm going to do two things. I'm going to finish the interior um, first layer of the interior. So I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter value. I'm going to happen to use this mauve color because I'm trying to weave the, the, the violets into this nest a little bit. It actually should be a little bit darker, so I'm going to put a very, very light coat using the side of my pastel to get it a little bit darker. Because this is the interior, so it's not going to be the lightest thing you see. Now notice that my egg shapes are getting a little wonky. That's going to happen. I'm going to have to go back and forth to refine them, especially as I start to add the straw. So I don't really stress. I also am noticing that this egg is much bigger than this egg, so this egg either has a problem or I need to adjust it. And I can either make that one smaller or this one larger. And you look at it and you say, well, what shape do you like the best? Well, I like the bigger one better, so I'll just make the smaller one a little bit bigger. So these are just things that I'm adjusting, and I tend to want to adjust them as, as it occurs to me so I don't forget. And then I'm going to put straw to hide the rest of that. All right, now I want to work on the background a little bit. Now, <clears throat> there's some leaves and foliage in my photo, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to start with a little bit of a kind of a middle dark value, and I'm using the side of my pastel to create, you can't really see it on the dark, to create some fat gestural marks that are... Um, suggestion of foliage or leaf, leaf shapes. That's one value. I'm going to add another value of the green uh, in here. I'm filling in some of the areas. I'm going, to, I'm going to introduce a little bit of sky color so that it's not quite as dense. I'm going to use another green. So the beauty of having already selected my pastel palette, oh, I'm going to do one thing I want to show you. I'm going to pull some green over this leaf, over the nest, so that it gives it a little bit more of a dimension. Back to what I was saying, the beauty of having selected your colors in advance is that I get to just now apply the colors. I already picked out the colors that I want. Now I really need to develop more of the feeling of the nest and uh, before I do that, because you can see it's getting lost, that's okay. I want to add some of that sky color and then I'm going to move on to refining the nest. And let's just make the sky color be nice if it echoed some of the egg color a little bit. So I'm going to use actually the same color that I put in the egg, this kind of gray, uh, really pale green. And uh, this is the fun part. I'm just using the pastel on its side, and I'm negatively painting some of those areas where I didn't put foliage. As it goes under the nest, I'm going to actually make it a little bit darker because you you would it would be more uh, the sky would be obscured a little bit. I'm also going to have to reinforce those. Um, sticks that are sticking out from the holding the nest in place. All right, now let's go refine the nest. So I'm going to go re reinforce the dark. Now, this is where it gets different. I'm going to change the way I make my mark. So I had big broad strokes. Let's look over here. Big broad strokes. Now I'm going to pick the pastel up so that I get a thinner, more linear mark. And I can make it thick. I can make it thinner, I can make it thinner, I can make it thinner. It all depends on how I lift the pastel from the surface. So I'm going to take that dark, and what I'm doing is reinforcing the darks, but I'm creating more of a linear mark instead of a wide fat mark. So I'm changing the type of marks that I'm making to help create this feeling of a nest. Now I'm going to start to get a little bit lighter. And as I get lighter, I'm changing again the type of marks that I use. And it's okay right now if I, um, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, cover up some of the leaves, that's what I want to say. Uh, I, I can always reintroduce, reintroduce some of those leaf shapes if I, if I choose. And all I'm doing is I'm just simply picking the colors that are already in my tray. 
So I can paint this nest quickly and just have fun playing with the marks because I don't have to keep going over to my box of pastels and saying, hmm, what color should I use next? I don't have to worry about that because I'm just going to use the colors that are here on the tray and I'm going to make them work. So I just added a violet or a mauve color and now I'm adding a orangey color. And I'm going to add it both to the sticks or the branches and to the actual nest itself. I don't want to put it everywhere because if it's everywhere then it's not going to be as effective. Now this is the fun part. This is where I want you to pretend. If you're doing a nest, I want you to start to pretend you're a bird. That's right. I want you to pretend you're a bird and think about if I were a bird, how would I... Are you laughing at me? This is true. If you think like a bird, then you can weave a nest that looks real. He, my, my camera person, Michael, is laughing at me, which is okay. Well, I'm used to that, right? But So, no, seriously, what, what do I mean by that? I actually just mean, how does that, how, isn't it amazing? Look at a bird nest. How do they weave all of those sticks and twigs and um, all the things that they find into, into this wonderful thing that we call a nest? And I'm looking at a nest right here in my studio that happened to be in a tree. This is last year's nest, um, and it fell out of the tree. And so I kept it because I can look at it, and it gives me much more information when I can look at a nest from real life than just a photograph. So I'm actually looking at my, my little nest over on my table. Now, it, I, if, if you can notice, as I paint and talk, I'm gradually making my marks smaller and smaller. In fact, I'm creating much more fine, linear lines, and I'm actually, I picked up some harder pastels to do that. Um, I've got some uh, new pastels in here. I've got some Giro pastels in here. I don't know what this one is exactly, but I'm thinking like a bird and I'm weaving the nest so that I can kind of have a tangle. What you don't want to do is just, uh, let's get a color that shows up, just go around and around and around like this because that's not the way it naturally is. If you look at the nest, there's thick bits and there's thin bits and p pieces that kind of come off crazily. And, and, uh, um, Pieces that hang over the egg and disguise the eggs. P pieces that are shooting out. And that's what I'm thinking as I'm painting. I'm also getting a variety of colors and now I'm starting to uh, use a variety of pressure. So I'm looking at the nest in front of me and I see there's pieces of, bigger pieces of straw, fat pieces. So I'm pressing hard. I'm changing the pressure and I'm making what I call shouting marks and you can see how these contrast with the with the lighter touch of the other t quality of marks and let's see and this is really not anything I can necessarily teach you about doing this other than encouraging you to play with the way you make your marks and to use a variety of marks to create this feeling of a nest Okay, now I want to show you another thing that I'm going to get to. What about the interior of the nest? Right now it's just this um, kind of big area. I'm going to show you this nest up close. I want you to look at how fine and tightly woven it is in the interior. Okay, that's what I want to try to recreate now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a pastel. Let's see if this is going to work. Sometimes I like to match the value of what's already there, which is a, a violet. So I'm going to use that same pastel, but I'm going to, a mauve color. I'm going to pick it up and use the edge, and I'm going to make fine marks. Now this time I am going to kind of weave it around the eggs. I don't want to cover up the dark area completely, because the dark area is what's going to give it a feeling of depth. I'm going to pick another color, weave it in. I'm going to use all the same colors because it's really the same material. It's just woven tightly to form that nice soft cup in the interior of the nest. I picked up another one. That ends up being a little bit too thick. I'm crossing my marks over 
so that I create a very fine, tight weave. And really, all I'm doing here is scribbling. So it's, that's a, that's another, that's a uh, official term, scribble. I'm pulling some pieces over the eggs because I want them to feel like they're sitting down in the nest and not pasted on top of it. So if I pull some pieces of straw over, then it kind of helps create that illusion a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and refine that one edge. I don't want hard edges all over the eggs, but just in a few key spots like so. And I'm looking at it and I see that these lighter marks are a little too regular, so I'm going to just pull a few off the side and pull some off the edge just a little bit. And then finally, I'd like to add a little bit of lighter, brighter green to the foliage. And I'm using the side of my pastel to make some fat, juicy, shouting marks to add some light to some of that foliage. Now, I could <clears throat> keep going with this and make it as photorealistic as I want to. It's up to you as to how much detail you want in your nest. Do you want it to be like the photo or do you want it to just be an impression of your nest? And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop. I will evaluate it and see if I feel like I need to add anything else, but I wanted just to show you from start to finish how you can use a variety of marks to help create this illusion of a, a bird nest and bird nests make a great study for mark making. So I hope you found this fun and helpful.